just realized that none of that was actually coming through the audio. So, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Let's start again. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Uh, I get a love when you don't actually uh, set your stuff up properly. Here I am talking for the last five minutes and no one heard a fucking word that I said. Although I don't think anyone's actually in here. So probably save that uh, that little bit of an issue. But anyway, um, today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to go through uh, showing off how I build maps in Tabletop Simulator. Now, uh, I've posted a few different maps that I've done in uh, various places like on Reddit and Facebook and whatnot and people have been somewhat impressed with with what I've done so I figured what I would do is I'd go through and just give you a step-by-step -step as to uh, what I uh, what I use how I do it and yeah so the one that I was showing off before that I'd forgotten that I hadn't actually bothered to uh, hadn't bothered to turn the audio on was this one here the palace of the heart's desire now i just have to reload this uh there we go all right so this one here is the palace of the heart's desire from the wild beyond the witch light so as you can see it's fairly complex um well it looks complex i should say it isn't really that complex but um, this is constructed by, uh, you have a single table, just the large table underneath, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different boards. Now the board here to do the upper level, I actually just made the, uh, the board edges transparent. So if you right click on it and then go to, uh, color tint, if you turn the opacity all the way down, if I turn it back up, you can see that it's it's there like that but because I don't want that to show up the edgings I just turn that all the way down um, so this one here you've got the uh, the, the the main the main board there a cut down version of the main board um, for the uh, the palace ground proper the second floor and then the various tower floors and then the tower to the the beanstalk tower and then of course just to be clever, and because I really wanted the big wow factor when all the players showed up to be able to look up and see that they're actually in the the outside of the castle. So what you can do is you can actually slide the top off and that gives you the first floor. And as you can see, all the, the bad guys and whatnot, my Jabberwock mini, um, a lot of uh, Hero Forge miniatures um, purchased for this and, and custom built. But uh, looking at this, you might think, well, crap, I'm not going to be able to build something like that. But... Truth be told, other than time, it is really, really simple to to build these um, these sort of maps. It just takes the time to put in to do it once you've got all the assets and uh, the basic know-how. So I figured what I would do, since I'm building maps for Spelljammer, is I will show you my process and how I build these things. So. Uh, as I was saying before, uh, this uh, Spelljammer map is from uh, Zach uh, Mollier, M-O-E-L-L-E-R. I'll put a link. And as you, it is a, uh, a Nautiloid, a uh, Mind Flayer vessel. Um, first thing all you really need to do is just make sure you've got the right size. I've already done that. Best way to do it is you have your, your miniatures of your player characters, put them onto the map, and then just scale it up so that they, uh, sorry, so scale up the the map so that the squares are aligned. Now this is slightly too small at the moment because it should be six squares across. So I'm going to just extend that out to seven. A little bit of guesswork involved with this, but one, two, three, four, five, six, nearly. Let's go uh, 7.5. Oh, I think that may have it. Let's slide that across to line up the lines. Beautiful. All right. And I'll just make it the same length. So that the dimensions remain the same. Um, don't worry so much about the height. Now this is just a, uh, a map board. So, whoops, wrong one. So all you do is you go to components, 
custom whoop, custom board. You put the board down, you import the image as you would normally. So go to the URL or whatever you do, and then um, just scale it up to the correct size. And then after you've done that, whoop, hang on, need to delete that one. Um, go right click toggles grid projection to get your grid over the top of it unless your map already has a grid in which case you don't have to worry about that you can just scale the miniatures yourself um and once that's done you're good to go now there is a specific asset that i use called the wall spawner that was created uh whoops hang on it was in the workshop you can go to uh this one here it's wall spawner by curl cooling cleaner you got to find that anywhere on um go to the, uh, the the workshop in uh, Tabletop Simulator. And this is the asset. It's this little device here. And the way that it works is pretty clever. It uses the... Uh, so all you do, first things first, is you use the, the color selector to choose the color of your walls. That's a little bit too bright because you sort of want to match up with the, the color here. So let's just... I think that's pretty good all right so we got that one there now the height is the trick so you want the the height of the walls to not be too big so that your uh your player characters don't get in there so i think two is kind of the good height you turn it to normal mode and the way that it works you push tab and tab again and it draws a line between the two now, that's a little bit too tall so i might change that to 1.5 whoops Point five. See how this works. Nope. Now right, let's split the difference. Let's go to one point seven five. Not a hundred and seventy five. You fool. Oop. Good God. That'll do. All right. So that's so. We, once we've got our height set. You can select these, oops, hang on, and then just delete them. All right, so all you got to do then is move this, um, put the, the spawner on the level that you want to spawn the walls on, and then set it to chain. And then all you need to do, if you go change it to first person view, uh, click on a point, and then click on the next point, and just draw the walls now when you get to doorways don't worry about that because you can fix that up afterwards it's relatively simple if you don't want to double up on your lines just draw an angled line go back to the point and come back across it can be a little bit tedious but it's relatively simple once you get the hang of it it'll sort of become second nature you'll find yourself just tabbing around like mad trying to do things when you're not actually intending to do them later on all right, all right. So we've got that floor done. As you can see, you've got the floors you don't want. So all you do is you hold down Control and just select the floors you don't need, or the walls you don't need, sorry. Make sure you don't accidentally click on the base because you don't want to accidentally delete that. Once you've got all the wall sections you don't want selected, just push Delete, and they're gone. Uh, now we've got this really cool looking window section here. So what you can do with that, uh, let's bring this over here for now. If you want to create a cool looking window, just set the line up and just much smaller lines. All right, and we'll delete the ones we don't need again. Okay, now you're thinking, well, hang on, these aren't windows, they're not transparent, but what you do then, same way you would do with deleting, just highlight each of these. All right, right click, go to color tint, change that to the red color, and then just put the opacity at like 50%. And voila, you have a stained glass window. We can do the same over here. Lovely. 
Alright, well, hang on, we've actually got a bit of a gap here. Alright. Uh, now, as for doors. So, you've got these sections here where the doors are, so you can just highlight where they are. If you don't want to worry about putting in like different door assets, you can just do the exact same thing that I did uh, with the windows and simply change the color of them. So for example, if we wanted these doors, actually that's not a door, that's a wall. Um, but if you want to change these to be uh, doors, we can like, make them just lighter colors. So you can do it that way so that if your players approach these, okay, so you know that the different colors are the doors, for example. But uh, we're not going to do that today. What we are going to do, since I have the asset for it, um, if you go onto the the workshop for uh, uh, Tabletop Simulator in Steam, you'll find people have built different uh, assets and whatnot. You can just uh, find those assets and grab them into your um, into your own projects. Uh, best way to describe it. So. I found this cool looking archway, which I think kind of best represents a uh, an illithid style door. It is just a uh, a prison door, basically. But you know, you can imagine that being some sort of weird illithid design. I've already changed the color to that, and it has the two different assets. However, I probably should change that so that it matches. Oh, what have I done? Was that the right color? Was this the color I chose? There we go. All right, cool. Now, it's not the right size at the moment, so we can just... Stretch that so that it fits. All right. Don't worry about it clipping through the the walls. That's that's fine. Um, all right. So then once you've got, like, your, your door set up for the... Um, Whoop. Probably should have... The trick is you've got to make sure that both asset types are locked. So if you've got two different states, make sure they're both uh, locked. So we'll lock this one. <gasps> no! And therein lies your first... <laughs> Always make sure you're clicking on the right thing when you hit the L buttons. So let's just go back. <laughs> You'll never know how many times I've done that. L. There we go. All right. And then we'll just drag that back into position. Beautiful. Okay. Um, we'll select that, we'll copy it, and then we'll just place these wherever there are doors, basically. Now, if we check the height set up for this one here, that'll give us that. You can just change the heights on all of these, so you don't have to worry about getting them on the same level. Makes things a little less finicky. And then we just slide that into position. And we need to slide that over a little bit to make sure it meshes in. And then just extend. There we go. Another trick you can do, just to make sure everything's sort of lined up correctly. Uh, you look at these ones here. So if you select both of them, and then just click on that, and then push enter, they will line up. So you just got to make sure you line them up on the right axis. So do that one there, and then... Boom. If we do it the other way, they'll end up getting stuck together in the wrong... The wrong axis. Alright. So there we have it. First floor basically done. This is a set of stairs that I believe goes down. So you don't need to worry about. So stairs that go down, you don't need to worry about. Um, if you've got stairs that go up, if you can find assets for stairs that go up, you can place them on the, the levels that go up. Um, but yeah, these are two sets of stairs that go up, actually. So I will use... Go to my, whoops, wrong one again. Go to my assets. 
stairs. Wood stairs. Ah. Also, one thing to remember, because I keep forgetting to do it, is before you start manipulating things in tight spaces, remember to lock them in place, because once they start touching the other the other assets, they'll bounce around and you can you can lose them. Like for example, if I were to do this and then if the item was unlocked, it would start flinging about the place and you can lose stuff going all over the place. So always best lock it in place first and then yeah, we set the points to zero. Cool. And then we want another set of stairs of identical size. Height of this one. We want the same Z axis. Just slide that into place. Alright. We might even make this a bit longer, I think. Let's try 2.2. There we go. And because this is meant to be like an illithid vessel, we can change the color tint on these to a more darker purple color. It'll still go with the brown, but it just gives it that uh, that same aesthetic as the rest of the ship. All right, so for the basics of this floor, that's done. We'll come back to... Uh, oh, sorry, one more thing. Um, if your walls are a bit too thin, uh, another thing you can do is this so if you highlight it you've got the scale here of this particular wall um unfortunately the wall spawner doesn't have the ability to produce uh, thicker walls uh, that may be something that'll be coming up later on in a different variant but all you need to do is just highlight it and just change that to like 0.3 or 0.2 and you'll get a slightly thicker wall so if you just highlight so hold down control with the transform tool just select all the the walls that you want Make sure you don't accidentally click the floor again because that can cause all sorts of issues down the line. More of a pain in the ass to fix. But, so we'll change all these to 0.3. There we go. So we've got some thicker interior walls now. It actually looks a bit more, a little bit more hefty. And we can add some uh, posts and whatnot in um, a uh, different asset bundle uh, later on just to give the um, what's the word I'm looking for just to give it the more more of a um, uh, a finished look so you don't just got like the blank walls um, one thing you can also do too like if you're looking here you see these walls are a little bit crooked uh, same as before when doing the alignments. If you click on this one here and this one here, if you click that wall, push enter, it'll rotate them around, and then you just need to give them the same. Uh, uh, because we want these actually to be straight, because they are meant to be straight. So we do that, and then give them the same fit there. There we go perfectly aligned now so that that's just more um fiddly aspects when you're when you're doing a, a quick build on a map you don't really need to worry about that quite so much but uh for your finished product product always uh, go back and straighten your walls out uh to make sure that uh, everything uh, lines up properly so yeah and that's that basic floor done um let's move on to the next floor i guess Actually, one easier way to do it as well, if you've got the door assets, this is another way you can do it. I think it's actually the preferred way of doing it anyway. Set the doors up first. That way you know where they are. And you can actually line up the, the walls so that they intersect with them perfectly. It just helps it a bit look a bit neater. Go into your, your top-down view because it makes it easier to line these up. And then, oh, hang on. Make sure you lock your your doors in place first. All right. So then just do it like that. And actually click on the doors so that you know where the alignments are. All righty. Oh, we missed a door here.
All right. So that's basically it. So as you can see, relatively simple to do once you've got the uh, once you've got the bits. Basically, that's that's the main trick. Just knowing where to find the different parts that you need. So all right. So that's the basics done. So we've now got the basic the basic build set up already. Um, if we wanted to do like exterior like railings, that's you can do that very simply with this as well. You just change the height um, and then you can change the color as well and you just go along the edges with that. And you've got lower walls or if you have uh, railing components, it can be a bit more complicated, but it looks a lot better. But for basics, you don't really need to worry about that too much. Um, all right, so we've got all those bits and oh no, missed another wall, missed another wall. All right, so once we've got all the walls in place, um, and you've tidied up everything else, it just comes down to just tidying up your your angles because you don't always draw things. Uh, directly so just go through and just make sure everything is squared away this can be a little bit tedious but you know not that big of a deal so yeah once you've got everything squared away and you're happy with uh, your door placement just make sure everything's sort of lined up properly uh, then it just come, comes down time to uh, start doing your detail work. So you, you can leave a map like this if you want. Um, like you don't need to worry about doing any of the additional assets. But uh, if you want to um, make it feel a bit more three-dimensional, you, if you've got things like boxes and uh, crates and things like that, you can just screw them about over the top of where the uh, the designer has actually placed them. That's how I, I find it's best to do so. Like, for example, here we've got some barrels. So if we just go... There we go. It's one of the basic barrel assets from Tabletop Simulator. It actually comes with it. And just overlay those onto the bits there. If you're not really happy with the color, you can just, again, change the color down. A little bit it doesn't work quite so well with um, the colored assets, but you know if you think that's a better way to go about it, you sent with a darker brown rather than a silver. But I don't really think it's that critical at this stage here. The main point is just to drive home what the um, what the items are and make it look like the uh, the character can actually interact with it. So I'm just going to get rid of that for now. Um, all right, we have a couple of chests. And it looks like a spiky keg. So let's put a spiky keg down there. And oh, chest. And it doesn't quite fit the scale. Just hit your plus button, blow it up. Now, if you're curious about where to get some good uh, random assets like for furniture and things like that. I will show that in a moment. So I get this table strewn away. There we go. And lock that one into place. Now one uh, thing you can find if you go to uh, again go to the workshop looking for frog. This one here called frog tools actually has a lot of assets. Some of them don't work um, as well as uh, you would like them to, but if we go here, we get, basically just get this little chest, and in this chest is bags for building all sorts of bits and pieces. So, like, for example, you're looking for... Um, was it furniture? Was what I was looking for. Where is it? Oh, just type it in. There we go. Furniture. So you drag the bag out and go right click search and these are all the assets that have been stored away in there. So you've got tables, chairs, um, shelves, all sorts of stuff. I think most of these assets were actually taken from um, Fallout. <laughs> I think they're actually Fallout assets. Um, but yeah, so you've got like round tables, uh, benches, chests, couches. This really nice table actually I quite like. I might actually um, find a space to put that in there. 
But uh, yeah, you got bunk beds um, without the springs, uh, just loose mattresses, plenty of stuff you can you can grab. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff in here. So you got like walls. So we got marble walls. Let's have a look at these marble walls. Oh, it's just a pillar. Okay. So sometimes a bit hit and miss. <laughs> A slam pool asset, which I think kind of works well there. So we'll stick that one on the ground there. Because we all know that the uh, Mind Flayers love their uh, their Mind Flayer parasites, their tadpoles. Uh, these things here are uh, like, like slime pod holding cells. So uh, we might actually might even put, just put those walls in there and then just put some transparencies across them just to show that. Uh, you got the main cargo area, so we can put more stuff in there. You've got the the toilet, um, this room with spiky stuff in it, um, and then of course you've got the uh, the main bridge. Now, one thing you can do as well. This is a bit more complicated. If you want to create multiple levels, um, I'll show you one that I've done earlier, just to make it. Um, bit simpler to explain so what you do the dark star here we go so this is one this is an encounter in the new uh, light of Zaraxxus uh, where you're on the galleon heading towards uh, escaping from the planet that's being attacked and this um, elf moth ship uh, comes in to attack you now so you've got the uh, the upper area there, and then the two lower floors. Like I said, he's ones that I pre pre uh, prepared earlier. I haven't built the, the interior sections as much with this one here. I haven't got round to that. But what I did for the upper level, because the upper level actually had multiple levels, is I created the upper levels. Now, all you have to do with that, it's a little bit more complicated, but I'll, sh I'll explain how it's done, um, is these are tiles or... Uh, tokens. Tokens probably be uh, Tiles are good if you've got square-edged assets, and uh, tokens are best if you've got uh, round-edge assets. So all I did was I imported the map into um, Photoshop, and I just cut out the relevant sections that were that were elevated. And then, it, once they were imported, I put them in at the appropriate height, built the walls up, and then sat them in there so that gives you multiple levels uh where you would normally have a flat plane again it's not like you know 100 percent wow 3d but in terms of playing a D, D game this is really all you need it's just something very very simple that lets you uh have the additional height and and floors um and it saves you having to build like an extra map because i did the same thing with this one here this uh the galleon map here you've got the the two the four and the the aft castle and then you've got the underside of those two castles as well it's very similar to what i did with the um the palace of the heart's desire you have the top section that could be removed in order to show the different floors but you don't necessarily have to do uh, have it all combined into a, sing a single map so if you've got the map here you've now got the uh the the upper deck with the two uh, the two castles the interior of the castles, and then the the bottom deck of the ship. And the same deal with this one here. You've got the observation deck, the uh, fortification, the um, boarding deck, I believe that one is. And then you've got the bridge with the helm, which is represented by this little area here. And then the whole interior cargo area. So you've got the whole, the whole map built. Um, so it, it's functional for your game but the main reason that you do all this stuff is so if for example i'm just going to change this to an asset i'll change it to purple uh actually no, first things first we need to change it to that one there the reason the main reason you do all this is so you can put a fog of war in place and then Your players can't see it, but when uh, I'll use this here, I've got this uh, Nuka Cola cap as the revealer, so they can approach, but they can't see through 
the walls. So, for example, if they've boarded by jumping into here inside the, uh, the, the weapons deck, they get to this bit here, open the door, it reveals down the corridor. And you don't... that way they can actually explore inside of a, a dungeon in a way that is more realistic, you see. Now, having the 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 assets pop up and go over the over the the walls, that's something that you just need to uh, change out. If you go to uh, toggles and just set it to auto, turn off the auto raise. That means that when it collides with a wall, for example, let's do it. I'll show you here. It won't go over the wall, so that way your 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 players can't slide. You know, it's gonna they'll have to force their way over over the things there. And yeah, and that's how. Well, that's the reason why you do all of that, basically. See, so can't get over the wall. <laughs> so what I would do... So, yeah, so going back to uh, the Lucian uh, Edict. Uh, this area here is actually two different raised levels. So uh, what I would do with this section here is like I did with the the previous maps is you put you make one image file which is this whole section but raised up and then you put another one on top of that so that way you get the two uh, the two different tiers on the map and that just helps with the um, uh, making it look more aesthetically pleasing the best way to describe it so then um, Another set of assets you can find, I would highly recommend anyone to grab a hold of, is uh, Chandler's D&D stuff is the one, because it has uh, this bag of walls. Now, this bag of walls is really, really good. It has a whole bunch of different walls um, in here. So, for example, if you go to the dark stone walls... Uh, you've got capped walls, basic walls, uh, capped basic walls, curved walls, cornered walls, and corner selections. Most of these, are, most of the bags are identical. They just have different textures attached to them. So we're just going to go to basic wall parts. In the basic wall parts, they have these. Whoop, it's fallen off. It'll show up again. There it is. Hello again. Welcome back. Uh, little pillar things. So we can blow that up to the right size. Uh the right height. Yep, cool. Thickness is a bit off, so if we change that to say 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, like that, and then we can put those here and here, lock them into place, and then there we go. And that gives you a nice looking ends to your walls. Lovely. And then again, if we wanted to... Oh, that's a bit too dark. I think if we make it more pink. There we go. Beautiful. Awesome. So, just copy one of those. And we'll just place... So, we got... A lot of the time it is just a little bit of trial, trial and error and just fiddling around with things to find out what works for you. And again, if this isn't for you, that's fine. Just find whatever works for you. It's like, if you don't want to make things even this more, this complicated, what you can do is the same trick with the walls, but you can also just make the walls completely transparent. That way, only the fog of war is it just basically blocks the fog the fog of war so you don't have to worry about putting any of the assets in like i've been doing you can literally just use it as um a 3d version of a of a 2d uh modeling program so you can have them all on a 2d plane but uh like 3d 3d models in a 2d plane for example I'll show you what I mean in a moment once I finish fiddling with this. One hour later. Alright, so what I've done, um, just to show this off as well, 
this is a quick uh, comeback. I went through and I did what I was talking about. So what I've created here, so I've taken the base map and then I've cut out in Photoshop those images with the transparency and the second bit there. So you've got the two different layers. So just for example, uh, just make sure I save the height. So when you lift this up, you still see it's the bit underneath that. And also when you lift up that bit there, it's still the whole thing underneath it. So all you do then is you import these. So as a custom token, that's the address. You set the thickness to whatever you want. I just think it's like half the size. Don't worry about anything of that. And once you import it, you scale it up so it's the right size to overlay onto the map. And that gives you levels within your... Um, uh, within your 2D space, just to help uh, flesh out the uh, the more complex areas. So things like, is unfortunately you can't do negatives when you've got the map boards. You could potentially do it with the transparency, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's not really that uh, that critical when it comes to that sort of stuff. So have your stairs going up. If you if there's no stairs, it's stairs going down because you've got the stairs going up and the other bit there. And yeah, I've also, this is just... Uh, Oh, it didn't save. Oh, that's right. I forgot to save. <laughs> that's right. So now all I got to do is uh, I've got everything else straightened out. I've got the the pillars in place. I've got the uh, I've resized the doors, lined everything up. Everything's all all set to go. Uh, now all I got to do is just got to fix up this window because I'm just going to have that line up around this. Cause I actually expanded that a bit too far. It's not that critical, but it's just more uh, something to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, at least myself. And after that, just got to throw in all of the uh, the other random bits and pieces, populate it, and it is ready for the party to kill themselves inside when they eventually come across it in my spell chamber game. So, yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's the basics on how to. Or how I build maps in uh, in Tabletop Simulator. Now, what I meant by uh, if you don't want to have to worry about doing the whole detail thing, you just want to use a 2D map. This is what I mean by that. So we're just going to go to um, one of my blanks. I have a few different uh, ones that I've got set up just for when I want to build generic things. So all you would need to do, for example, let us... Let's grab this tavern. All right, cool. So we have the tavern here. Um... Very generic tavern. Now, suppose you wanted to play on this, but you didn't want to have to build it up in 3D. You just wanted to keep it flat, but you wanted to also have the fog of war. That's very simple to do. So let's change the color to the, the black mode again. All you need is the wall spawner again. Uh, change the height to 2. Do your chain. But... Change the color and make the color. If you don't want it to be completely imperceptible, um, you do that. But if you want it to be completely invisible, you do it that way. It's always good to have a little bit of color. That way you can sort of see what you're working on. But you do it like that. And then literally just do the same thing as we did before. So. Okay, so you can see the walls are now semi-transparent, but all the walls that you need, I'm fairly certain, are we missing... No, no, we've got them all. Alright, cool, so all the walls are there, so now, if we cut back to... Oh, hang on. We grab our fog of war. Zip. Cover the whole thing. Okay. No, we missed that walls at the top corner. Never mind, that's fine. Um, but change color to brown and now your players can see that there are rooms but they can't reveal anything that you have blocked off and then if you want to allow them access to an area just delete the wall that you use to create the doors. That's why you've got to like keep your clicking a bit different. Same deal there. Delete that. And there it is. 
Very, very simple. It's a much simpler way of doing it than um, how, how I was doing it. But, you know, got to start somewhere if you want to keep it simple just for your, your beginner thing. So, yeah. Pick yourself up the uh, the wall spawner. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. For now, I think that's what we're going to leave today. I just wanted to give you guys a little rundown on how I, I build maps here. Um, hope it was informative. Um, and yeah please remember to like and subscribe and until next time everybody remember to keep on blending bye